Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I want to thank everybody for your patience waiting in line. And I also want to thank you for coming to the dedication of our state statue and symbol of the State House, agriculture. I am Chris Cole. I have the distinct pleasure and honor of being appointed your BGS, Buildings and General Services, Commissioner. And I will be the master of ceremonies and presiding over this celebration. You are going to hear from Governor Scott, Speaker Mitzi Johnson, and Senator Becca Balin. You are also going to be entertained by the Montpelier High School Honor Choir that is going to be singing our state song, the words of which are on the back of your program. Although I know you don't need them, most of you know them at heart, we decided to help out those that may be new to the state. You're also at the very end of this presentation going to see the carver, both sculptors, Jerry Williams and Chris Miller, with state curator David Sheets. As the master of ceremonies, I have the distinct pleasure of thanking the people who are responsible for the statue you see behind me. Trisha Harper, who works for Buildings and General Services, was the project manager on this project. She worked very closely with David Sheets, who is the state curator for Vermont. Joe Aja, the director of design and construction for BGS, was also involved. Peter Hicks was our clerk of the works. I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Evergreen Metals and Paint. You look up at that gold dome, you also look at the, the gilding on agriculture, they're the ones responsible for that. Doesn't that dome look beautiful? Jenny Miller, Sergeant of Arms at the Vermont State House. Senator Peg Flory, Representative Alice Emmons, who both chair the Institutions Committee where the funding, your funding, for this project was programmed. Laura Trishman, Jamie Dugan, both of the Historic Preservation, Jack Salinga, David Sheets of the State Curator's Office, Mike Kuhn and Rick Kirshner were your selection committee who selected the sculptors who carved this magnificent statue. It is now my honor and distinct pleasure to introduce to you Governor of the State of Vermont, Phil Scott. Well, thank you very much and thanks for your patience. I appreciate everyone coming out today. I want to especially thank Speaker Johnson uh, Senator Ballant, as well as all the other legislators, past and present, I've run across this morning. It's great to see all of you here and all of you for coming to this historic event. In a short time, agriculture, who is often called Ceres, will be lifted to her new home atop the most beautiful state house in the country. I have to admit, having worked construction in my entire life, I've enjoyed watching this project from the beginning to the end. My office right over there has a great view of the State House. So I've been able to watch the scaffolding being erected, which was a project in of itself, as well as the gilding of the dome, the painting of the drum, and the replacement of the windows throughout the summer. I also got a close up view of the work being done when I got to climb to the top meet the crew and the guilders and even apply a little bit of the gold leafing myself. The craftsmanship is incredible and everyone did such a great job. Now we get to see the final piece put into place, the raising of Ceres to complete this beautiful restoration. This will be the third version of the statue to go on top of the gold dome. The first was a 14 foot pine figure carved by Brattleboro wood carver, Johan Henkel working from a model by Brattleboro sculptor Larkin Goldsmith Mead, which remained in place for 80 years. By 1938, the statue was severely rotted. So at the age of 83, Sergeant at Arms Dwight Dwinell, a lifelong woodworker himself, carved the head, while two other woodworkers carved the body. The new statue, Series 2, was put in place that very same year. 
Now, after years of doing all they could to protect her from the elements, the Department of Buildings and General Services determined that after 80 years, Series 2 needed to be replaced as well. So a request for a proposal went out to sculptors and woodworkers and wood carvers, and it was important to me that Vermonters were included in this process. A committee of representatives from BGS, the State Curator's Office, Sergeant at Arms, and the Historic Preservation evaluated the proposals. The choice was unanimous. And I was thrilled to learn that Jerry Williams and Chris Miller, two Vermonters, were selected. Jerry has worked as a sculptor in central Vermont since 1986, when he established the Berry Sculpture Studios after his apprenticeship. He works in bronze, granite, marble, limestone, plaster, slate, and clay, creating sculptures from a range of public and private commissions. Chris is also an accomplished sculptor who works with granite, wood, and marble. Since he began carving in 1976, his works have appeared across the Northeast. They include, amongst many other creations, a 9-11 memorial on Staten Island, a watershed table at the University of Massachusetts, as well as a renowned 74-foot zipper on Main Street in Barrie. <laughs> now, for the last several months, Chris and Jerry have worked extremely hard, working really long hours to deliver this piece. They studied old photographs and sketches of Larkin Mead's original statue, working to not only create a replica, but one that is clearly their own work of art. Chris started with a laminated block of mahogany. He worked with a mill to scan the beautiful model Jerry had created, and then removed the excess down to just inches of the surface. And then it was all blood, sweat, and tears from there. All together was a four-month-old hand-carved process. And these were far more than just eight-hour days. And what made it even more special was that the community got to witness it. With the help of Scott McLaughlin of the Vermont Granite Museum in Barrie, Chris carved the statue while thousands of visitors stopped by to watch. I stopped to see it as well. They even let me take a few uh, swings with a mallet in order to put my signature on it. If you look at the elbow right up there, you'll know that's, uh, that's part of my creation. I'm so incredibly proud that this sculpture was carved just a few miles away in my hometown of Barrie, where we still enjoy a vibrant, artistic carving community. This statue is a testament to our history and their craft. I'm thankful to Chris and Jerry for their contribution to the state. I'd like to take a moment once again to extend our appreciation to these homegrown Vermont artists. Please join me in a round of applause for Chris and Jerry. This restoration is amongst the most important in the building's 160 year history. I want to thank the Department of Buildings and General Services, Agency of Administration, the Legislature, and all those who worked on and supported this effort. And now after a six month hiatus, I'm looking forward to once again seeing Ceres, the goddess of agriculture, atop this beautiful state house. So thank you very much for coming today. Thank you, Governor Scott. Next, I'd like to introduce Speaker Mitzi Johnson, who is also my former dairy farm milking partner. It's true. Chris and I, uh, excuse me, the commissioner and I, um, first met as milkers at a farm up in South Hero. Um, and here we are now uh, getting to share this day with the most famous of Vermont uh, agricultural icons. The fact that all of you are here today really confirms something that I've been feeling for the last six months, which is we do have the most beautiful state house in the country, but it's really been missing something. Uh, it, I, I've always said that um, the day that I walk in and, and don't get goosebumps looking at our state house is the day that I need to walk away. And 
Uh, I still get those goosebumps and it has been different the last six months. There's the fact that we have um, our history and an anchor of our state as agriculture dominating our dome and uh, the goddess looking over us as we do our work in the legislature is an incredibly important testament to what our values are in Vermont, what is important to us and what we honor in this state. And I am, uh, I am so grateful that David Sheets is the enthusiastic, passionate, and very accomplished curator that he is for the state of Vermont, and that he takes such good care of the state house. Thank you. Thank you, Mitzi. We're now going to hear from the majority leader from the Senate, Senator Becca Bailiff. Good morning, or perhaps it's afternoon now, I'm not sure. It's an honor for me to represent the Senate today. When I was first invited to speak here, I was a little nervous. Uh, you may know that Ceres also represents fertility. And I've already got two kids, and so Siri, like, we're on the same page here. I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't need another. No more children. Uh, when I told my kids I was coming here today, what I was coming for, my son, who's 10, said, why are you going to a ceremony to honor Siri, the god of the cell phone? And, and I said, I said, exactly, kid, why am I when I can't get cell service between Bellows Falls and Brattleboro? I explained that no, no, Ceres, not Siri. And I pointed out that across this beautiful state, every morning, Vermonters perform their daily ritual, their understated and often an unacknowledged homage to the goddess of agriculture. They lift their hands and they pour their morning cereal. Series, cereal. How many of you have thought of that? It's the connection right there. Think about it now, forevermore, when you pour your morning cereal. In preparation for this event, this very wonderful Vermont event, I thought about what are all the other references to series that we overlook? So I have a little participation for the crowd today. I'm gonna to read a little excerpt from a Shakespearean play, and I want you to figure out which one it's from. Series has a cameo. This is what she says, this is her speech. Earth's incense, boys in plenty, barns and garners never empty, vines and clustering bunches growing, plants with goodly birth in, Going, spring come to you at the farthest in the end of the harvest scarcity and want shall shun you series blessing so is on you who knows midsummer night's dream. it's not midsummer night's dream it's not hamlet the tempest. the tempest yes well done well done <laughs> on a more serious note it says a lot that we we as Vermonters chose the goddess of agriculture, a woman to represent the harvest and the seasons to crown our stunning but modest rotunda. We could have had Moses, the lawgiver, or some other luminary from Vermont's history, but Ceres reminds us that we are bound to the land. And like farming, legislation is an iterative process. We put the best seeds in the ground, and we hope that they will bear fruit. If they do, we reap the harvest gratefully, and if they don't, we must examine why, and try again with either other seeds, or other fertilizer, or different techniques. But we must ever remain curious. In closing, I wanna tell you, one of our very new legislators from Wyndham County has asked me numerous times over the last few months, Will Ceres be back on top of the dome before I start my first session? Like so many of us, we are hesitant to start our important work without this formidable goddess watching over us. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Senator. We are now going to find the right distance. We're going to now hear from the Montpelier High School Honor Choir singing our state song, 
these green mountains. Here are your instructions. We're going to let them sing it first and listen. Then they're going to sing it again, and we're all going to join in. All right? Ready? Go ahead. Sorry. Yep, you're good. close out the ceremony, I would have liked to invite David Sheets, our state curator, as well as the two sculptors, Jerry Williams and Chris Miller, to come to the podium. So, ah. <laughs> here's, here's what's happening. Emotion, love, community. This state is the state in the United States that stands the most for community, freedom, and unity. And this goddess, she's an allegorical figure, yes, but I think we can all agree that's a goddess. 
I've come a long way in 39 years at this building. I didn't used to believe in goddesses. I do now. Big time. And curators have the great pleasure of being in touch with an incredible community of artists throughout this state. So many artists are in this crowd today, and the two that I've had the great privilege of getting to know even better than I did before, who have created this gigantic work of art for you, the people of Vermont, are going to talk to you now. Jerry Williams and Chris Miller. Here they are. I to go first. <clears throat> Jerry said I had to go first. Okay, I, I know it's cold. I've got a, um, a long list of people that need to be thanked, so please bear with me. I'm going to ramble a tiny bit. First of all, thank you, Governor Scott, and everyone for uh, this incredible honor. Um, to thank, first and most importantly, my teammate, Jerry Williams. The reason this statue is beautiful is simply because Jerry designed it that way. For the, all the many hours it took to carve this, I had the beautiful model to, uh, to reference and to measure from. Jerry had the hard job. He had to create this figure from thin air. It's been an honor to work with you, Jerry. Thank you. When Jerry finished the model, uh, his son, Sean Williams, cast it into the hard model I worked from, I was working from. Accurate casting is something that's really hard to do well, and this model turned out perfect. Thanks, Sean. There he is. Okay. Um, thanks to the selection committee and Governor Scott, who decided that a couple of local sculptors should tackle this job. Uh, in the initial proposal, we were asked to describe our methods and how we would approach this project. Two things were personally very important to me. First, the, the two previous versions were hand carved, and I felt the best way to honor the earlier craftsmanship was to do as much as physically possible given the short time frame by hand using some of the same tools that had been used in 1858 when the first one was created. The second idea, uh, since this is a once in a lifetime event, is to open it up to the public and allow people to witness and to touch and to understand and be part of the process. The, the state, I'm very grateful, completely bought into these ideas and they worked hard to facilitate them. Uh, over the course of making this, thousands and thousands of Vermonters uh, came and visited and witnessed this come to life. And that has been the best part of this project. Uh, the many people, next page, uh, many, <laughs> many people follow this progress on social media posts. I was so impressed that I, to find that I now have several hundred, hundred Instagram followers <laughs> until I realized that an, that's less than an average unpopular 11-year-old. <laughs> okay, so thanks to uh, Trisha Harper, who as project manager for this overall beautiful restoration behind here, found time while juggling the needs of all the people working on it to get me everything I needed. Thanks to Jack, Angelica, and David from the State Curator's Office, who kept things moving with skill and with uh, humor. You know, when I was writing these notes, I struggled with just what to say about the one and only David Sheets. <laughs> so I called up every other state capital and talked to them. And it's safe to say that we here in Vermont are fortunate to have the most determined, most creative, most visionary, and goofiest curator <laughs> in the country. Okay. Thanks to Jeff Randall and everyone at Anglebirth Construction, and Flint and his crew at SWW Erectors, and Mike the Lightning Guy. One of the things I like about getting to work on a really large project is you get to work with architects and engineers and construction professionals who just know how to get stuff done. You, you go in and you say like, here's what I have in mind. I'm gonna, 
get this block and I'm going to make it this big and I'm going to make it hollow. It's going to have this channel and then we'll make a base and uh, a post and do all this stuff. And you make a couple of quick pencil drawings and some hand gestures and they're, they're like immediately, oh yeah, we can make this happen, no problem. So uh, as an example, uh, Jeff brings Flint over uh, to manage the rigging and to see uh, to the studio to see how we're going to transport this over here. And they're walking around looking at the statue for two minutes and Flint says, okay, so what if I build you an apparatus that can raise and lower the statue safely by yourself? I'm like, wow, this would be great. And then I'll make it so you can spin this two-ton statue in any position with one hand. Okay, and a week later, this amazing engineering feat shows up that he built. And the thing is that these guys didn't have to make this thing. They did it because they were really interested in this product and they're really great guys. Uh, almost done. Rick Clark, Jim Clark, Brian Clark of Clark Builders and Callus who helped me laminate the massive block of wood here. So you talk about professionals who really get it instantly. So, uh, so I'm like, okay, you guys, we're going to mill up 2,000 board feet of raw lumber, cut out these exacting patterns, laminate it into this humongous statue in three weeks' time. And they're like, okay, we got it. We're on it. Uh, there have been a team of professionals tirelessly photographing, videoing, and documenting every step of the way. Thanks to Jeb Wallace Broder, Rick McMahon, Paul Rogers, Megan O'Rourke. Thanks to the Times Argus, Montpelier Bridge, Vermont Digger, Seven Days, Vermont's Arts Council, Public Radio for keeping everybody informed, not fake news. <laughs> Almost done. Uh, much thanks to Scott McLaughlin, the executive director at the Board of Directors of the Vermont Granite Museum, for their generous use of their very beautiful facility. Uh, everyone here should go to the museum, become a member, it's a real treasure here. And thanks to all you wonderful, lovely Vermonters for being part of this. Thank you, Chris. All right. Uh, if the... Jerry? 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 No, not at all. I didn't know. I thought he was speaking for the both of you. Oh, okay. No. Oh, no. no. My remarks are uh, short and sweet. <laughs> um, there must be a million, million and a half of you out there. <laughs> Thanks for all, all of you for coming to this journey's end. Um, and I hope for all a new beginning for series, for series and the next generation of Vermonters. May it serve you well. A special thanks to all who were involved in the planning, uh, development, and completion of the dome project. The list is too long, and you all know who you are. I think Chris just about covered it anyway. To be honest, when this part of the project began in June, I had serious doubts that it could be done in such a short time. Kudos to Chris Miller, whose hard work, long hours, and skills made today possible. Chris, what are you going to do with all that time? <laughs> Never mind, I, I think I know. Um, I'll keep my remarks short, and um, because frankly I can't wait much longer to see her up on the dome. And I'm sure you all feel the same way. Thank you. Jerry. So Ingelberth, our construction company, is going to begin preparing her for the ascent. And uh, it'll be a couple of minutes, and then we will all witness the goddess rise to the top of the dome. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, yeah. It was incredible. That's what I'm saying. Like, Ma'am, could I have trouble for your, for your other, for your other oh, name besides Sirius? Yeah. Okay. My name is Brenda, right. B-R-E-N-D-A-G-R-E-I-K-A. G-R-E-I-K-A. Rika? What town do you live in, Brenda? Thank you. This is wild. This is just wild. Nope. They can lift her right where she is. We just all have to at least be behind the guy. 
<laughs> just leave it right here. It'll so right hang on, here. is this still live? No, no. It, it okay. can be if you need right. it to. Yeah. yeah, let me make a quick announcement. So as the statue goes up, by the way, um, you may want to go out to the front for the full view of how she goes up to the dome. So the crowd may want to start going in that direction in order to get the best perspective. That's awesome. Best to be right on the granite pavers. And stay on the walkways, okay? <laughs> Leatherman to the rescue. This this is just an ad for